Hello, this is Angela Leong with Lab 21. For Lab 21, we are configuring the VMware's vSphere fault tolerance. So the objective is to implement and test the fault tolerance, or FT. So for task one, we are going to be creating a new VM kernel network adapter. So I'm going to be adding a new VM kernel adapter for ESXi host one. So that's under manage networking, virtual switches, add networking, and then we're going to go through the wizard, which is VM kernel network adapter, hit next. We're going to create a new standard switch, and then we're going to add an adapter, and we're going to select VM NIC2, and then we're going to label it capital F capital T, and then we're going to enable the services for vMotion, fault tolerance logging, and management traffic. We're going to statically assign um, IP 192.16.2051.255.255.255.0 Hit next and then finish. So I'm going to do the same thing for ESX2 host and the only thing different is that the IP will be dot .52 instead of 51. And hit finish. For task 2, we're going to configure the host for a data store. So we're going to configure for ESX2 host, and that's under Manage, Storage, Storage Adapters. We're going to click on the plus sign, and we're going to add a new software iSCSI adapter. Hit OK. Refresh the page, and it should appear at the bottom. We're going to click on it, make sure it shows enabled, and then we're going to add a target. Okay, and then we're going to do a rescan. That's just clicking on this button, or you can just right click here, go to storage, and then rescan. So once it's finished rescanning, we can click on paths, and we'll see that we'll see two LUNs, and they're both active active. For task theory, we're going to prepare the lab cluster. So in order to do that, we need to move ESX1 and 2 hosts into the lab cluster. That's just a quick drag and drop into the lab cluster. Next, we're going to turn on HA, and that's um, if you click on the lab cluster, manage settings under services as vSphere HA, hit the edit, and then we're going to just configure this. So, first, we're going to take off turn on vSphere HA, and then we're going to go down, make sure under emission control is ticked off under define failover capacity by reserving a percentage of cluster resources and we're going to change from the default 25 percent to 18 and 18 and then under data store for heart beating we're going to use the data stores from a specified list and complement automatically if needed and we're going to check off the two data two storages that we see nfs vol 1 and iscosy lun 0 and then hit ok and then we're going to just let this run and reconfigure for task 4, we're going to prep a VM for vSphere fault tolerance. And in order to do that, we must first remove all the snapshots on the VM first prior to turning on fault tolerance. So we're going to do this for our student VM01. It's just a right click, snapshots, manage snapshots, and delete all. So here I've already done it for our student VM1. And then we're going to modify the settings. Under summary, and then VM hardware. I'll actually just right click, edit settings, and then we're just going to change the memory to 512. And then CD DVD drive, we're going to move it to, actually, we're just going to move it. And click OK. And then we're going to go over to related objects, data stores. We're going to browse this data store, NFS wall 1. And then we're going to look for this student VM01. And then we're going to look for this VMDK file. And then we're going to just inflate it. After inflating, we're going to go on to task 5, and now we're going to configure a virtual machine for fault tolerance. 
So in order to do that, we're on the host and clusters on the student VM01. We're going to right click and then fault tolerance and turn on fault tolerance. And then it's going to ask, we're going to say yes. Okay, so it's going to show us all of these. And then for the storage, we're going to select iSCSI LUN0. And then we're going to hit next. For the secondary host, we're going to select host 2, ESXi host 2, and then hit next, and then finish. After turning on fault tolerance, we're going to power on the VM and then give it one to two minutes, and then we'll take a look at the fault tolerance. And it'll show that the status will change from not protected to protected. And then for student VM2, I'm just going to edit the settings and change the memory from 1 gig to 512 megabytes. Hit OK and then just power that on. Okay, so for the last test task, we're going to test the vSphere fault tolerance protection. So right now I open up terminal and I'm pinging both um, student VM1 and student VM2. So this is student VM1, the 110, and then this is student VM2.111. And then we're going to go and shut down host 1. For the reason we're testing HA and FT. So as we can see here, the two VMs, student VM1 and student VM2, were migrated off onto host 2. And then we can look at the ping times, and looks like they're both responding.